If you use Visual Studio Code to do all your development in, I'm guessing that you work with Jason all the time. I'm not talking about the guy from the Game of Thrones. Yeah, Jim's that way, yeah. Now I'm also guessing that you've probably never consciously thought if you're working as optimal as you could when you're coding and working with Jason. And this is the video that's gonna sort that out. So give me 10 minutes of your time and I'm gonna teach you some tips, tricks, keyboard shortcuts and extensions that's gonna allow you to work more productively when it comes to working with Jason. And I promise this video is not going to drag on <laughs> and the code is coming soon. <laughs> Sorry. If this is the first time that you're stumbling across my channel, then you, my friend, are in for a complete treat. I do weekly YouTube videos on web development and productivity. So if that floats your boat, I recommend you do two quick actions. First, you want to smash on that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with my content. And second, if you click the like button, it will help me with the YouTube algorithm. I've become famous. And the next thing you know, I could be starring in the Game of Thrones as well, being all hench. And as a little reward for doing that, I'm going to show you a picture of Miss Mimosa with his top off. Hmm. So enough of this nonsense, let's crack on and learn something about VS Code. Typically when we end up working with JSON, it's because we need to query some sort of API and get a response back. Now, when it comes to querying APIs, you could use something like Postman. However, instead of having to jump outside of Visual Studio Code, a quicker and better alternative is to use Thunder Client. So Thunder Client is basically a free Postman inside of VS Code. As you can see, I've got my requests here, clicking on the send button, it's gonna get me some JSON return. So I can simply copy my JSON and then add it into my Visual Studios. In a lot of instances, when we get JSON, it's gonna be malformed. So this one's pretty beautiful. However, if I do something like this, it's a pain. Now, obviously when we're reading our JSON, we wanna make sure that it's easy to read. And this is where we can use the Visual Studio Code Beautify keyboard shortcut. So what we want to do is press Alt, we want to press Shift, and we want to press F. And as you can see, our JSON is magically formatted. So that's Alt, Shift, and F. It's not unusual after querying an API that the payload response is huge. We're talking hundreds of lines long. Now, obviously, it's possible to get that response, paste it into a file in Visual Studio, and then use the classic capabilities like expand and contract, or even search to find data and understand what's in that payload. Now, there's a better way of working with this payload response, and that's through a marketplace extension called JSON Viewer. To get going with this extension, go to your Extension Explorer, type in a JSON Viewer, and from the list, find it and install it. Now, after installing this extension, what we can do is go to View, Command, Palettes, and we can do Open in JSON Viewer. And this is gonna open up this brand new Explorer, and I find working with JSON in this view much quicker and easier. So first off, we've got the ability to expand everything. We've also got the ability to collapse everything. We've got an object browser, as you'd expect, so we can quickly see and interact with the document. Now, I think where this JSON Viewer really shines is the search. So what we can do is quickly say type in New York, do a search and straight away all the elements which are relevant will be automatically highlighted and expanded. So we can quickly see all the data we need in a single view. And working with JSON Viewer, it's just gonna allow you to find all that information just that little bit quicker. If you're a developer who finds it interesting learning about how things work under the hood, then this next tip is for you. Now, in a typical JavaScript project, we're all well aware of the classic files like package.json, app settings, Babel RC, that kind of stuff. Now, have you ever consciously thought, if you go into, say, package.json, type in IntelliSense, and have a look through the options, all of these different options here are valid for this document. So let's say we go to name, add it in. We've also got some description that helps us understand what we need to add in. So package. Now, have you actually ever thought, how does that work? How do we get the correct IntelliSense for this file? And this is where the JSON schema comes into play. So let's open this basic JSON file that I've created. If I do IntelliSense right at the top, you can see I have this schema attribute. And then if I press in a value, you can see that I'm getting some options which I can pick from. 
and these schema options are all the default ones which are installed within Visual Studio Code. So as you can see, we've got one for package.json, jsconfig, bower, psconfig. We've also got some default ones. So adding in, say, the package JSON one, I can then do a comma. I can then get my name attribute, just like I did before, with exactly the same tool tips. So we can actually create our own schemas and then link to them within our document. Whenever you find yourself creating a custom JSON configuration file, throw in a schema with it to make your users' lives much easier. It's only going to take a few seconds. Now, the whole schema can be found at json-schema.org. If you come here, you're going to find loads of different examples that you can use. So let's have a look at this in action. Now, within my projects, I've created a file called schema.json. This can be named whatever you need to. Now, in here, we need to define basically what's allowed in our JSON file. So first thing we need to do is define an ID. This basically needs to be a unique namespace. So as you can see, it could just be example.com. I've called mine john.rocks, schema.json. Call it whatever makes you happy. Now, underneath this, it's recommended to link to a JSON schema. There's loads that you can actually link to if you really wanted to. So as you can see, just use your IntelliSense and pick one which makes you happy. Now, underneath this, we need to find a top level object. So as you can see, I'm going to call my schema John Data. I'm going to have two required properties, which are called name and surname. And underneath here, we're going to define an object. And within that object, we're going to define our properties. So within the properties item, we can define everything that we want to be allowed within that document. So you can see I've got one called name and surname. And the description is first name silly and surname silly. Now, these can be of type string. They can be of type integer. We can get booleans that kind of stuff. As you can see, use the amazing schema IntelliSense to actually give you a prompt. Now, as you can see, we've got our schema defined. Let's go back to our JSON file and see how we link to it. So first, IntelliSense. Let's now go schema.json and point it to our local file. Now, if I do a comma, do our IntelliSense again, and you can see straight off the bat, I've got access to my name and surname property. So let's go for name. Moving over the mouse, you can see I've got that tooltip of first name silly. And also do the same for surname. And because I made both of these properties mandatory, you won't be able to see it, but there's a validation error here because I haven't got all the required mandatory properties. So as you can see, for people having to fill in a JSON configuration file using a schema, it's just going to make their lives much easier. My last tip is going to be centered on using an artificial intelligence marketplace extension to automatically and quickly generate JSON data that we can use within our code. Now, I'm going to do a full on video in a few weeks around the best artificial extension to use in VS Code. However, for now, we can just use GitHub Copilot. So go to extensions, go to GitHub Copilot. Go to their website, sign up, currently in beta, but you should get an account. Now, after installing it, all I need to do is write a comment and do address JSON schema. Go on to the next line, click tab. As you can see, I've got all the code to generate this address schema. I can do exactly the same. Maybe I want to do mock JSON data. Go to the next line, click tab, boom, there we go. I can also do person JSON schema. Go to the next line, click tab, get the recommendation. Job is a good one. So yeah, if you need to generate loads of JSON quickly, I recommend checking out Copilot. That concludes all of my productivity tips for JSON. Now, how did you find it? Please leave some comments below if you found it useful or not. Now, doing a whole video just on JSON probably isn't the most epic video in the world. However, I'm hoping you agree. There's definitely some nuggets in there, which is worth knowing about, which can help you up your developer game. Now, if you have appreciated this video, you can show me some appreciation in two ways. First, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can get future updates. Second, click on that like button to help this video get shown to more people, help the YouTube algorithm, and help me get world domination. I'd greatly appreciate it. Finally, at the bottom here, there's a link to my weekly newsletter. So if you want some industry news every week and a little bit of a joke, subscribe. It's free. It's all done through some tools so you can subscribe. You won't get spammed. That'll be nice and fun for all of us.
Well, anyway, I hope you've had a great time enjoying this. I hope you have an amazing time wherever you are in the world. Till the next video, people. Happy coding.